A graphene-converted banana peel will greatly reduce the environmental impact of building materials such as concrete. Even plastic can turn into graphene. From the Popular Science Archive. The James Tour Chemistry Lab from Rice University can transform any carbon source into graphene grains. This method is both very cheap and very fast. According to James Tour, flash graphene technique transforms a ton of coal, food waste, even plastic, much cheaper than other graphene production methods. This is an important step, says Tour, 30 to 40 percent of all food is going to garbage worldwide because it's stale. Plastic is also a global problem. We have proved that we can convert all carbon-based solids, including mixed plastic waste and car tires, to graphene. Flash graphene is produced in 10 milliseconds by heating any carbon-containing material at 3000 Kelvin 2727 to the power of 0 C. These materials include food waste, plastic waste, oil smell, coal, wood. The current commercial value of the graph can reach $200,000 per ton. So the advantages of this process will be great, says Tour. Even 0.1% flash graphene to be added to cement for concrete mix can reduce its environmental impact by one-third. The carbon dioxide emission that occurs every year with the cement production accounts for 8% of the CO2 production from man. We can use much less concrete in buildings by reinforcing concrete with graphene, we can reduce the costs in production and transportation. Researchers trap greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and methane, just as they occur in food waste at solid waste sites. By converting these carbons into graphene and adding them to concrete, it is possible to reduce the CO2 production used in concrete production. Thus, thanks to graphene, a two-sided gain can be achieved. Turning garbage into treasure is the key to a circular economy, says Ruzba Shasavori, who is also the author of the article and also the head of Secrete Technologies. Here, graphene acts both as a 2D mold for cement and as an additive to be used in hydration and strengthening. According to Tour, it was very expensive to use graphene in these applications in the past. Thanks to the flash method, since these costs are greatly reduced, waste management can be made more easily. Carbon is fixed by our method, he doesn't get in the air again. Rice University recently launched a zero-emission initiative, in this context, tightening its steps to convert gasoline and gas hydrocarbons into hydrogen gas and solid carbon with no CO2 emissions by reuse. Tours flash graphene method will also convert solid carbon into graphene for use in concrete, asphalt, building, automobile, clothing and many other industries. The flash graphene method was developed by Dewey Luong, a graduate student working in the Tour lab and the first author of the article. Thanks to this method, it is much cheaper and faster than other costly and effortless methods such as graphite peeling and vapor deposition on metal foil to obtain a small amount of graphene. Also, thanks to this process, non-aligned, turbostratic graphene, which is much easier to separate, is obtained. It is extremely difficult to separate the graphene obtained in other methods, says Tour, the layers in those methods stick very strongly together. It is also much easier to work with turbostratic because the joining between layers is extremely low. It can be easily separated with the help of a solution or composite. This is really important because now we can enable these monatomic layers to interact with the main composite. The researchers of the laboratory also stated that they managed to convert ground coffee into single-layered graphene leaves. It is also emphasized that the conversion of plastic, metal, plywood, concrete and other construction materials into graphene in large quantities is a huge market for flash graphene. Researchers are currently performing tests on graphene-reinforced concrete and plastic. How is it formed? The flash process takes place in a specially designed reactor that heats the material extremely quickly and converts all elements except carbon to gas. When this process takes its place in the manufacturing industry, valuable elements such as oxygen and nitrogen from the flash reactor can be trapped in small molecules, says Tour. A very low temperature is released during the flash operation. Most of the energy is directed to the target. So much so that, according to Tour, you can put your finger on the reactor a few seconds after the procedure. 
In addition, this process is three times warmer than the chemical steam furnaces previously used to produce graphene. However, during the flash process, the heat is concentrated on the carbon material and does not reach the surrounding reactor. All of the increased energy appears as light like an extremely bright camera flash and is a very clean process because there is no solvent. Luang, who developed the method, says he was not expecting to obtain graphene while developing the first small-scale device, he wanted to research new material phases and started the experiment with carbon black. Senya Betts, one of the other authors of the article, also confirms that temperature is an important factor for the rapid conversion of the material, we accelerated a slow geological process and made it become the basic form of carbon, graphite. In addition to being accelerated with a sudden increase in heat, this process is also stopped at the right time. The James Tour Lab will produce 1 kilogram of flash graphene a day in two years, with a project recently funded by the U.S. Department of Energy.